just want to start off by by saying thanks for joining and, and taking taking the time out of your day to uh, to meet with us and, and hear a little bit more about we what we have to say. Um, I uh, hope that today you will leave um, a little more informed about the Microsoft uh, talent skills gap that exists across the ANZ region um, and hopefully also inspired about how you might uh, approach things differently um, by using alternative solutions like Revlent to uh, very much help your business to address that talent gap um, and uh, very much build those talent pipelines for future skills growth. Um, before we do kick off, though, I, I wanted to just uh, acknowledge and pay our respects to the traditional custodians of the lands and waters in which we're all dialing in from today. For me, that is in southeast uh, Melbourne or Nam, on the land of the Bonarong people of the Kulin Nation. It's one of those weird days today whereby it's very, very sunny outside. Um, however, it's deceivingly sunny because it's absolutely freezing. So uh, hopefully wherever you are joining from today, um, you have managed to seek a bit of warmth. Um, just, to, just to kick off, I, I wanted to start with a round of introductions. Um, uh, we're, we're joined um, today by um, two of uh, um, uh, you know, some of my favorite people. Um, we've got Narelle um, and Mike on, on, on the call. Um, I might start off just with a quick intro and then I might pass it over to yourself, Narelle. Um, uh, Kyle O'Brien, I'm the director for Revelant locally here across Australia and New Zealand. Um, have been a part of the, the company uh, for about four or five years now, historically um, with them, the, the business in, in the UK um, before uh, making the move back home to, to Australia um, uh, with our business. Um, tell you a little bit more about our business um, in due course, um, but just a bit about my background. I've largely worked in workforce development for probably the last 10 years very much across the cloud ecosystem and looking at how we build skills across the eco, um, both through um, hiring mechanisms and also upskilling and uh, uh, reskilling motions as well. Very passionate about the topic that we are going to discuss today. Um, so are um, my peers on the call as well. So um, on that note, Narelle, I might pass it across to, to yourself. Fantastic, thank you, Kyle. So I work in Microsoft's worldwide learning team. My region covers Australia, New Zealand, and Southeast Asia. So the role that I'm tasked with is actually looking at our next generation of talent and also solving the critical skill shortages and talent shortages that exist across our markets. So in Australia and New Zealand, we have a program called the Tech Talent Generator, which Revelant is one of the key partners for. And here we look to be able to address the gaps where they exist for employers and partners. So uh, we'll talk a little bit more about that in a moment, but uh, my role is to make the connection. So identify what it is that's really fundamentally missing in your organization and make sure I connect you in with the likes of Kyle and his team to be able to really solve that critical talent gap. So I, my background, I've actually worked in workforce consulting for a while as well, uh, but I've also worked in education across uh, higher education, vocational education, and also corporate learning, uh, doing just-in-time training. So uh, everything learning uh, is my space and then thinking about resolving those talent gaps that exist. On that note, I'll hand over to Michael. Thank you, Narelle, and, and thanks, Carl. You are definitely also one of my favorite people as well, not to just speak to, but also to work with. So um, thank you for calling that out, well reciprocated. Um, hey, everyone for joining, and Carl, thanks so much for um, inviting me uh, to the panel and to this webinar. I'm Mike Zhang, I'm one of the directors in our technology space uh, within PwC. I've actually been um, in the CRM implementation space for the last 13 years, so, um, and been with PwC for five and previously in another big four. Uh, and I've been working quite closely um, with uh, Carl and the Revenant team over the last two and a half years, actually. So really keen to talk a little bit later about some of the insights, um, some of the case studies, and also some of the successes that both of our organizations have shared. Perfect. Thanks, Mike. Thanks, Narelle. And coincidentally, I'm not sure if you're aware of this, but it's actually International Mic Day today. So I'm pleased that we have had uh, the chance to polish Australia's finest and uh, and bring them on to, onto this call here. So. Um, just wanted to take a quick glance uh, as to the agenda for today's session. Um, we've got an hour in the diary, however, we're probably expecting to close it off in, in, in between 30 and 40 minutes. Um, 
depending on how many questions you have. So uh, um, please do use the chat function um, for questions. We'll, we'll have some time at the end to very much uh, address that Q&A um, and hopefully um, either drill into a little bit more detail on some of the topics discussed or answer any questions that uh, you think weren't um, covered in today's session. So uh, Narelle's going to talk a little bit at the start about the, the, the tech talent gap um, and just look at some really interesting statistics around that um, across across the, the, the Australia and New Zealand. Um, and then uh, she's going to hand, hand across to myself, who's just going to take you through a little bit about what we do here at Revolent and how we support em employers, particularly consulting partners, to um, really sort of think differently about um, uh, creative ways to address that skills gap. Um, and uh, to Mike's point, hopefully I'm going to reference a couple of uh, case studies that we've had um, working with uh, with PwC Australia um, and close it off with that informal Q&A. Um, so that's a little bit about um, today's session. Um, so on that uh, first agenda point, um, I'm Narelle, I'll pass over to you. Fantastic. Thank you, Kyle. Uh, one of the roles that I play within Microsoft is to lead the skills pillar for Australia and New Zealand. And to do that, we work quite closely with the um, Australia, the Tech Council of Australia. Uh, I'm a member of the Digital Employment Forums. And one of the things that we talk about quite a bit is the pace at which the industry is growing. So right now there's a massive gap of around 653,000 tech workers. Some of that will be made up organically through natural uh, increase in talent through the ecosystem, but probably half of it won't be. Uh, a lot of it's not going to be produced by education sector either because we don't produce that many graduates a year. I think it's something like 7,000 IT graduates each year. So thinking about new ways to build the tech capability from people migrating out of traditional uh, workforce and transitioning them across into tech, but also being able to level up the existing tech workers and move into more uh, deeper plays in tech as well to be able to deepen the bench strength of the talent that we have in our organization is pretty key to the success of organizations. A lot of the pressure is coming because tech is helping to fuel the economy's growth. So we're definitely seeing it contribute significantly back to the uh, GDP, not only in Australia, but also in New Zealand. So New Zealand, we've seen it absolutely boom. It's now the third biggest producer of GDP and revenue for the country, uh, and it's doubling the speed of growth than any other industry. The, the two markets are fairly similar. I think the, the key difference is that whatever we're feeling in Australia is probably worse in New Zealand. Um, they've got higher um, utilization rates. So there's more people actively working in a full-time capacity in their marketplace. So they don't have a lot of underutilization that can be tapped into. They also have a very low unemployment rate. It's lower than Australia's and has been for a while. So we definitely see pressure points exist more in the New Zealand market. And so where they can, they, they typically try to drag resources out of the Australian market to be able to do work in New Zealand. But anything that's related to government and public sector, they, they struggle to get the talent in, in country with the clearances that they need. So we definitely see this, this cross country sort of push and pull of talent as well. So what we're trying to do uh, with the likes of Revelant um, is really look for new ways to create talent where you guys need them. So maybe if you flip to the next slide, this is just the Australian um, Tech Council of Australia's uh, piece of research that, that they did. And it specifically looks at the makeup of the growth that we're expecting over the next sort of five to seven years, right? This is projecting out to 2030. So what it's looking at is on the left-hand side, it's from your lowest digital skills sort of entry level um, capacity. And to the right-hand side, it's more your technical professionals that are sitting in that bucket. And then on, on the graph from lowest to highest, so from bottom to top, we're looking at number of years experience. So from your least experienced to the most experienced. And there's a couple of really big call-out pockets. Basically, what they've identified is that anything that's really technically skilled is going to grow and we're going to struggle. Whether they've got lots of years of experience or a few years of experience, there's just going to be a massive demand for that pool of talent. So that's everything in the dark blue on the far right-hand side. The other pocket that's really interesting is the one that's this sort of on the cusp. So think um, functional consultants, so people transitioning out of 
a specialized career, maybe accounting, um, maybe supply chain or something like that. And then they're transitioning into a functional consulting role. So the depth of experience that they have in their craft and being able to make sense of it, that's another one which is sitting on the cusp, which is going to be in high demand as well. Interestingly, Revolent play really well into both of those spaces. And it's why Revolent tend to show up in a lot of my conversations when I'm speaking with partners, because they take experienced IT professionals, they skill them deeply in a specialized area, and then they propel them into your organization so you can make them billable from day one. So this is important. Um, not a lot of providers are actually doing this. I work with a number of them, and a lot of them are producing talent at the entry level, so at the very bottom of the chart, and maybe around that 87,000 mark. So see that digital technicians and trades, that sort of baseline, maybe edging a little bit into technical professionals around 146,000, but still that zero to two years experience. It's where a lot of talent through these programs are getting generated for. But what Revelant does differently is the experience. And to be honest, that's what people are asking me for. They get excited about going, yeah, we want to create new talent. That's fantastic. We we definitely want to partner with you. And then you say, in what way? Show us where the problems are. And they go, well, we actually really need people to hit the ground running and we need depth of experience. So I think it's a really cool model that you guys have developed at Revolent Kyle. And um, I'm sure Michael can attest to it as well. But this is going to solve some critical issues within the Australian market. Um, and we would imagine that New Zealand would have very similar challenges. Uh, the, there hasn't been a report like this done in New Zealand as of yet uh, to this sort of magnitude, but I do know that the NZ Tech are talking with Tech Council of Australia to see how they could replicate similar research, but I imagine it'd be very similar. So on that note, I might hand back to you, Kyle, to sort of kick us into the next part of the session. Great. Thanks very much, Narelle, and yeah, very interesting stats and, and definitely feeding into the, um, the, the context for today's uh, webinar. Um, to, Revelant is, you know, innovative at our core. I always say that innovation is is doing things differently and doing different things. And to Narelle's point, we're very, um, very clear on our messaging on, on where we want to be adding value into the partner ecosystem um, specifically. We do that via two of our core programs. Uh, one which might be familiar to you um, already is, is what's called a higher train deploy model. Um, and I'll talk through that um, first up. And then also want to talk about our, our, our standard training provisions, which we are looking to help um, uplift capacity, uplift skills, and um, really move people through that career pyramid um, through um, more of your traditional training provisions. Um, we do tweak our training provisions a little bit differently than perhaps some of the other training initiatives you've previously spoken to. So also keen to really unpack that as well. Um, but we are keen to talk about higher train deploy model. Um, to Narelle's point, we are, we are very specific about the type of individual, type of profile that we are talking to. Um, now that is typically an experienced tech professional that has historically built a career outside of Microsoft um, in a comparable tax stack, perhaps. Um, and we're typically hiring individuals based on the years of prior experience. Uh, we grade our rebels across three categories. Um, uh, and rebels are the name of the individuals that do come onto our program. Um, our grade one rebels are typically um, coming into us, our program with uh, up to two years, between one and two years of prior commercial experience. Let's say, for example, as a Java developer, um, or our grade twos are typically three to four years of prior experience. Um, and then our grade three rebels are typically the more senior folks on our program um, that are coming in with typically five years plus. Um, if we look at the uh, rebels that we have on our um, program locally across ANZ at the moment, um, we, average years of prior commercial experience is about seven and a half years. So we're, we're, we're traditionally um, attracting a, a mid-career um, a professional who has really heard about the wonderful um, career opportunities that lie within Microsoft and um, perhaps has, has tiptoed on the out, uh, outskirts of the ecosystem trying to find a way in and they've really um, liked the, the, the Revlent program because it offers a very structured and comprehensive way to, to learn and earn throughout that, um, throughout that journey. Um, so this is a nice, nice, nice visual um, that, that just shows you the types of profile of, of individuals that we're targeting um, and where they might sit within your delivery teams, within your business. Um, this is my favorite slide because it really 
out, out, outlines the, out, the the construct of our model in four key stages. Um, we're, we're traditionally um, focusing on um, you know our, our hiring phase to start with, and as a part of um, one of the largest cloud recruitment um, firms in Australia, here we're able to really tailor that hiring phase and and. Um, uh, make sure we're finding the people with the right skills, technical backgrounds, but also the right attitude and aptitude towards wanting to make a career transition. Um, we are typically hiring in cohorts or groups. Um, so our groups are typically six to 16 people in size. Um, and we really want to make sure that we are um, hiring those people who are completely dedicated to towards this transition, as opposed to just um, finding a job. Now, now, some of the benefits of the of the customers that we are working with, like PwC, that we want to be addressing through this program, is uh, we want to be addressing um, the, the the sheer volume of talent that exists in the Microsoft ecosystem. Um, we also want to be addressing some of the challenges that partners are facing around um, uh, attrition, um, and also we, we want to be addressing um, the ever increasing salaries expectations within the ecosystem and ever decreasing profit margins for partners. Um, so we're really finding those people who are in it for the long haul. Um, once we've found um, our, our cohort or our group, um, we would then commence our very intensive um, training boot camp, um, which is typically between 10 and 12 weeks in, in duration. It's worth mentioning that the individuals that come onto this program are full-time employees from the start of, of, of their training. So it provides them, to my point earlier, a really nice, safe, comprehensive way that they can really learn the tech um, throughout that period and, and hone their skills um, uh, with the support of our certified instructors. Um, it's a complete nine to five, Monday to Friday um, uh, construct. Um, and in turn, we are measuring um, uh, progress through certifications as one checkpoint, but probably more importantly, and, and I talked about the old, our, our um, delivery methodology earlier, is that Revlance whole premise is that we are delivering hands-on practical use case driven training because we really want to be focused on um, deploying billable resources from day one um, and uh, in turn um, we need to make sure that uh, that throughout that training phase that they have visibility of what a job looks like in the um, in, in in the workplace so uh, um, throughout that three months let's say at the end of that training phase um, they're fully certified fully capable to be deployed within your business um, and then we would support them across a two-year um, journey, um, whereby they would be um, remain on our on our payroll, but they would be um, supplied on a time and material basis throughout that period um, to organisations like yourselves. Um, now, throughout that period, they should look and feel like your employee um, and very much be billable um, as a part of those project teams. Um, however, we would really um, um, support um, the individual, but also the hiring managers throughout that phase to make sure that that ongoing professional development and uh, you know, career development is, is driving in the right direction. Uh, because what we're working towards is at the end of that period, really want them to um, convert into your own full-time headcount. Is that what you and the individuals or rebels um, want? Um, so that we are in turn over this longer period of time, really crafting and honing skills, creating that good practice, creating that long-term skill growth, um, and in turn, um, really growing that Microsoft ecosystem um, in, a, in a positive way as we inject resources into that wider, wider ecosystem that have come through our program. Uh, so that's a, a bit of an overview of those four stages and just some of the key sort of highlights or USPs that are attached to each of those phases. Um, uh, and, uh, you know, like I said, please do use the, the chat function if there were some specific questions that you had off the, off the back of that. Um, however, I want to just touch on perhaps an example of what that pathway might look like for the learner um, or, or, or for, you, for yourselves and as an employer as well. Uh, this is an example of our um, the D365 FNO consultant track. Um, um, uh, we would typically, if we look at that business model that I, I outlined before, we're typically hiring individuals on this track, um, perhaps that have that finance background, perhaps that accounting background. We really have that industry industry wealth of expertise. Um, and uh, when they come through our training per provisions, we typically cover off um, three of these core um, uh, dynamics uh, certifications, which would really look to adopt the, the certifications and the skills that are associated to them, 
but also um, expose them to that practical hands-on use case driven uh, environments. Um, so that takes up probably 80% of that uh, initial training period. And then we leave 20% at the end there to really hone and craft their consulting skills because we feel like the tech does certainly play a, a, a real crucial part, but also most importantly, we want to make sure that they're uh, um, able to be client facing um, and uh, uh, in turn shape those soft uh, and professional skills um, as well. Um, and so at the end of that that, that initial boot camp, um, whilst they are working full-time capacity with your organization, um, to my point, that professional development is ongoing and an example of what that ongoing FNO track might look like um, for someone coming through our program. Um, hopefully that, that provides a, a, a nice example there. Um, I, I only had time to present one of the, the pathways. However, we do um, operate across D365, Azure Security, um, and also um, uh, M365 and Power Platform as well. Um, so hopefully your talent, your, your, your skills gaps do align to, to one of those and happy to, to break down our other pathways um, uh, at, a, at a suitable time. Um, so that's our higher train deploy model. Um, uh, I also talked about uh, ways in which we can really uplift capacity, create that succession planning um, for your organization. I think it's really, really important. Um, uh, Narelle talked about the need for different levels of, of skills within our uh, project teams, within our organizations. Um, we feel that uh, succession planning is an imperative part of progress. Um, and in turn, our, uh, our two programs that we offer for um, training and, and enablement is um, perhaps taking your existing Microsoft talent um, uh, and uh, putting them through a more advanced certification pathway. Our, our, our pathways are typically um, full-time or part-time offerings, um, and they uh, are, are focused very much, to my point earlier, around that practical application. So about 50% of the time is spent on, on, on theory and, and, and concepts that are behind said uh, certification that we are focusing on. However, the other 50% is, is, is around that real hands-on practical team um, uh, project environment so that we can really not only measure the, the knowledge um, that's gone in, but more importantly, um, the application. I'm a firm believer in a very simple equation that T plus A equals C, which is training plus the application equals competence. Um, I think all too often on tr more traditional um, training programs, uh, we send someone away for five days and they absorb all this knowledge and then they come back in the workplace and uh, you know, 50%, 40% actually stick. Um, so we really wanna make sure that we are really embedding those skills through that hands-on, through that practical application. The alternative um, uh, program, um, which we are calling um, Reskill, might be within your practice somewhere there might be a legacy tech stack which uh, you might be decommissioning um, a practice or looking to modernize some skills we offer more of a, a, a group environment where we are able to really um, uh, take someone from zero to hero and um, through our programs and and look to really retrain and, and, and cross skill um, your internal employees as well um, a bit of a, a snapshot as to the different certifications. I think I gave an overview of the verticals that we are playing in. Um, however, also um, some of the certifications that are aligned to those as well. Move on to, to, to a bit of a case study now. Um, and hopefully, Mike, um, you've uh, um, uh, got yourself there off, off mute, ready to, to, to go on action. Um, thought it might be good, Mike, if you could just um, start with setting a bit of context, uh, a little bit um, of uh, you know where you guys are at, as, as a practice um, when, when, when engaging with, with Revelant um, and talk about maybe some of the challenges and the pain points that you're hoping to address. Yeah, absolutely, Carl. Um, I did not know it was International Mic Day, so now I'm holding the mic. There you go. <laughs> Horrible joke. Um, I can talk all day about this, so you just let me know when uh, my, my time is up. So I think um, for a little bit of context, um, looking at the way that the technology practice has grown at PwC, we're starting to see more and more complex work coming through, uh, more and more end-to-end -end digital transformations where um, our clients require more of a value integrator rather than just a system implementer. A uh, system implementer, a couple of uh, raw skills coming in there and developing technology, but more around how do we integrate the solution within uh, within the, the client ecosystem. 
I think uh, whilst we have our own internal academies um, at PwC around our graduate program, um, around our Adelaide Skilled Services Hub program, um, you know, we, we're really looking at kind of foraging talent from the ground up. Um, however, at the same time, there needs to be a demand that we need to fill around ready trained um, resources, uh, ready to go within the CRM implementation space. Um, and I think this is where uh, Revelant came in as one of our alternative delivery methods, right? Where I think there was three points um, that really attracted uh, us to the Revelant model. So uh, number one is the ready consultants that are coming in that are already accredited, ready skilled, and um, have the ability to be client ready um, to be deployed onto a client side. The second thing is around how quickly we're able to onboard these individuals. So it's not just, hey, Kyle, team, we need um, five people. What, how do we quickly source them? But they actually go through an academy process over the course of three months where we would handpick and interview um, the, the teams to double check whether or not they fit within our culture, as well as our expectations around hard skills as well as soft skills. And I think the last big thing for me would be around the risk factor. So, um, you know, as Carl mentioned that, you know, the Revelant team, although highly embedded as part of the PwC culture, PwC team, both around client work, as well as our internal services, um, that the risk of having the team there, uh, whether it's through probation, whether it's through annual reviews, is all maintained by Revelant throughout a two year program. And the one thing that we should not forget about is that this is not just a let's subcontract, but looking at the outcome of these two years of the resources, even eventually looking to build up their profile, looking to build up their cloud and tenure within our organization to then be finally onboarded as a fully fledged PwC employee. So essentially changing badges um, at that two year mark, um, you know, rather than uh, restarting the, the, the whole hiring process. Carl, back to you. Thanks, thanks, Mike. Appreciate that. Um, and I, I think you touched nicely there on, on on sort of the why as well, right? What 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 key pain points, what uh, challenges was PwC looking to address when engaging a, a program like like Revlent? Um, mm. You know, you talk about your your alternative delivery model. I think it's it's awesome, um, and uh, I think uh, offering your customers um, uh, different ways of of staffing projects, I think, is is imperative in this day and age. Um, I wondered if you can just talk a little bit more about um, uh, the way that the, the Revelant group is, uh, I suppose, interacting or integrating within your existing practice and perhaps some of the benefits um, that a Revel brings. I think mm. all too often when, when people hear about net new talent, their, their mind does mm. shift to, um, you know, green, raw, raw um, resources. <laughs> It'd be good to yeah. talk, talk through that and, and you know, um, your experience. Yeah, yeah. I think, um, Carl, one of the things that you mentioned in uh, previously on this call uh, was around the different tiers of Revelant. Um, now, with those different tiers, obviously, comes with different expectations, skill levels, the reskilling, the upskilling, but also a cost that's associated with, um, you know, that, that relationship of onboarding them to our organization as well as to our clients, right, where we potentially put margins on that. I think generally... Um, you know, the big thing for us is that the scalability factor. So I talked about the risk averse, I talked about the quick to market of onboarding a new resource, but essentially there is a scale factor that comes with, well, if we do need five or 10 people that, you know, we would have the, uh, you know, Carl and team be able to very quickly source those skills, uh, whether or not it's people that needed, you know, through that tier one, starting to source from the market through universities, et cetera, um, to go through a training program or reskilling from someone who has had you know 10 years of full stack experience in an sap environment um, in an oracle environment where they could potentially learn a similar or like-minded type of platform um i think the other thing that i just kind of want to mention here is around um uh the 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 the, the, the benefit around not just looking at the individuals eventually uh, from Revelant or the revers eventually being part of the organization that the actual process of onboarding training practical application of getting that individual ready is actually also a almost like a service that um, that Revelant also provides right so what that means is when we're starting to look at upskilling our own internal let's say fresh staff 
people that come from the graduate program, people that do also come in from the skilled services hub, hub um, over in Adelaide, that we can actually leverage Revolut's training academy or Revolut's um, three month onboarding program to also out, um, to also apply that to 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 our um, staff as well. So reducing the need for internal um, internal onboarding, internal training, and internal immersion into environments, especially when, as we would all know, um, in this day and age, that you know there will always be a squeeze around high demand, um, not enough supply, not enough competent supply um, within within the technology implementation space. Mm, Carl? Absolutely, absolutely. Thanks, Mike. Indeed, um, and we've probably got time for one more. I uh, just wanted to see if there's any any advice or uh, any parting wisdom that you wanted to to, to provide the, the group here um, who might be um, at, at a similar stage to you now or, or, or when you were initially looking to engage. Um, keen to sort of hear if there's any sort of parting um, words. Yeah, um, I think we've definitely learned a lot um, through our partnership in the last two and a half years. And, you know, we work across multiple alliances um, here at PwC and, you know, Revlin has been supporting us through those technology alliances, right? not just CRM alliances, et cetera. Um, I think one of the biggest lessons that I would say here is that I know two years sounds like a very long time. It really isn't. Um, and second thing is, you know, it's not, it's not a subcontracting model, right? The ultimate outcome is not that once that individual, once the cohort of revs finishes up within a specific client that they kind of walk away and take their skills with them. The ultimate outcome is to actually onboard that individual become a fully fledged, um, you know, uh, part of your organization. Um, which means that one of the key lessons we learned would be to um, embed and onboard that individual into and immerse them into your culture, immerse them into your way of doing things, badges at the door, encourage and empower them starting from day one. So that the, the individuals themselves, um, and also as part of your teams, don't feel like that there is this kind of tension or friction between two organizations or having two different um, teams within those organizations, right? So um, making sure that, uh, just to quickly summarize, making sure that we embed them early, making sure that we see the outcome over two years as leading that individual to be part of your organization. Um, and then lastly, ensuring that we're getting that individual the, the right amount of end-to-end -end experiences. Think about it like this for both organizations um, at the same time, you know, onboarding them, training them, and, and, and lastly, you know, managing their, their, their learning journey across um, this, this, this tech landscape. Awesome. Thanks, Mike. Appreciate it. Um, and I agree, it, it definitely does take that commitment um, from both parties. Um, and, and I admire the, the commitment that PwC has to, to growing um, our cloud ecosystems more broadly and, and their commitment to diversity and inclusion within, within that, right? So I think we've um, done some really commendable um, initiatives over the, over the years, including the, um, the the Indigenous Tech Academy, um, which uh, which was uh, you know a great great um, uh, opportunity for um, Indigenous uh, Australians um, from regional parts of Australia to really um, uh, find their way into technology roles, uh, and in turn um, not only sort of learn and train. Um, uh, in in a way that perhaps um, uh, we haven't pre-COVID, in, in particularly through through digital uh, methods, but also um, provide opportunities or, or job opportunities and that practical experience, um, which historically perhaps is is most likely only been um, delivered in uh, metropolitan areas. So commendable um, work there from from PwC, and and thanks thanks again, Mike, for for joining and, and sharing some of your uh, feedback. Cool. No problem. Which leads us to next steps. Um, we would typically uh, sit down and, and look at actually what that, um, that that talent gap, what those talent needs look like within your organization. Um, really try and understand the why, um, you know, and and um, what uh, we, we are looking to address, um, so that we can create that really solid business case as to why um, Revolent is right for your business. Um, and then we would really look to create a, a joint plan and, and work with, get together with other stakeholders across your business um, to, to make sure that we're designing an affordable, sustainable um, and scalable um, uh, workforce development plan for your organization. Hopefully that um, was helpful. And to my point earlier, you were informed and inspired. Um, and uh, uh, yeah, hopefully um, we can leave you there with a few minutes back in your day as well. Um, so uh, again, thanks for joining. Um, thanks to our panelists and uh, Narelle, Mike for, for joining as well.